for their brain to figure out what is who mean, what is where mean is difficult. Hmm. So you break it down into components. Now, autism comes with its own strengths also, right? We see certain kids having crazy, good, crazy abilities. Can you just like break down a few stories for me around that? Uh, yeah. So, we have children who can do shlokas, mantras. Wow. Their recitation power is so solid. There are children who will tell you, uh, if I say, okay, I was born on the 9th of December 1976, which actually is when I was born. And that child will look at me and calculate and say, uh, that was a Wednesday. Wow. They can they can do that. Wow. And uh, they come with amazing spatial awareness and abilities that, um, for example, in my son's case, one day he said, don't take the flyover, that's the wrong route. And GPS was showing, take the flyover. Hmm. Me and my husband looked at each other and we went under the flyover and guess what? We saved ourselves the trouble of five kilometers of unnecessary going and taking a <laughs> U-turn and wasting time. Because he had been on that route once before, a <laughs> couple of years ago. But he knew. Wow. And that is how accurate they are. Wow. Any more? Some of them have skills of painting. We have one non-verbal autistic child who uh, has written two books already. Yeah, wow. yeah. His name is Navneet Kulkarni. He's not my student, but he's an autistic person. We know of many autistic people who've been through school, college. Rishabh Raj Bhatia is, of course, very proudly, I say, my student. He's an MCA and presently working with uh, Access Bank. Wow. And now uh, got promoted as assistant manager and shifted from Jaipur to uh, Mumbai back. Uh, lots others, lots others. I know of another autistic child, not child, adult now, who's doing PhD in math. Wow. So, now there's this something about autistic children that one section says, oh, they are geniuses. And another section says they are disabled. Hmm. So, which is true, which yeah. is true. The fact is that because of the novelty seeking gene, uh, that's DRD4. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's the novelty seeking gene, which is in the human genome for the past 10,000 plus years. Mm. Ever since we were, you know, those uh, like the monkey yeah, kind. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And since then, that gene has not gone. And that is associated with ADHD and autism. <laughs> which means somewhere in them, they have something which is unique about a certain area. Right. And their focus in that area and their intelligence in that area is unmatched. Unparalleled. Right. But then why only some kids, why not others? Because the gaps and the problems are so much hmm. that this kid who was a wrapped gift the entire of the life, it is so unfortunate right. that the wrapping of the gift could not be opened and the gift could not come out because behaviors were far too many what was inside nobody could reach it hmm. schools said no to this kid because parents didn't know behavior correction techniques they kept following ot after ot after ot and all they got was you know this is a disability it can't be corrected hmm. whereas all they needed was behavior correction techniques the right ones right so then language is not there they cannot make friends Consequently, they cannot study because when language is missing, mental image is missing. If they're reading something, they don't know what it means because they're not even talking it. Right. Comprehension is not there. So schooling is out of question. And parents are so scared with all of this that they will do everything for the kid. After all, that is their kid. So they'll brush his teeth. They'll bathe him. They'll not let him take the lift on their own. They will not let the kid interact with the guard, with the courier man. There goes independence. Right. Now this kid, whatever his DRD4 gene had, makes no sense because you could never reach there. Right. That's what happens to a majority of children. So you've worked with more than 20,000 kids at this point of time, right? And you've worked with the parents. And I want to get into the parents' mindset. 
I've seen parents not accepting the fact that the kid has autism multiple times because I've been with you past from two years in this time because I've and I've seen them in real when we met we had this entire uh, offline event, event offline events mm. across multiple cities. I've seen that like there are so many parents who are still not ready to accept even like again. when even the one parent is accepting then is another parent still in denial who just wants to be just like be there who just want someone to prove him that this is happening and i was little aghast with what was going on and you, you can you can see it he has a problem right but why why is this happening what is this behavior can you just explain me yeah so this is very interesting have you ever followed the li- the little champs or whatever the singing idol uh-huh, and all of those uh-huh, shows right. yeah yeah how many times do we see the father coming up to the stage with the tears in eyes and saying you have made me proud in hindi saying tumne meri na kuchi kar di yeah <laughs> so much drama it's yeah but <laughs> it's about it's about my genes being superior than another person's okay the superior race kind of a thing okay that is what is the basic structure of our society you know which says these are scheduled castes and these are everybody is a homo sapien right right but everybody is not a homo sapien this is a brahmin homo sapien and this is a, <laughs> a, a not brahmin homo sapien you get it right it's the superiority of the genes right. okay so anybody standing first is uh, i have done it for my dad because the dad wanted the proof that my genes are superior hmm. so when you have something like autism it simply their definition of autism is mentally gone zero yeah hmm. mental mental retardation um like mental in general uh, yeah like put them in a institute uh, yeah yeah that the brain is damaged the brain is incapable hmm. this is uh, in a very crude language if i may say and please forgive my saying so but i'm trying to convey the feeling like in a manufacturing lot this is the defective piece okay hmm. when a parent now that another one's child is standing first in class so superior genes as opposed to mine inferior genes that's hard to take and the very next thing that comes up is nobody in my family has it nobody in my because it's about genes so to convince myself that oh it's about genes because that's how i think then my genes are not inferior See, my mother doesn't have, my mm. mama doesn't have, my chacha ka, taya ka, bua ka, palana ka, palana ka. Somebody in the family doesn't have, and then the blame game starts. Your, your family, family has it, right? It came from yeah, your family. It came from there. Your family, because of you, I am, I am having to look down because of you. Now, also the patriarchal society that we have, women are raised in dysfunctional families. Honestly. father is yelling shouting on the mother and the kid the girl child is growing up seeing all of that nonsense and the mother is being an enabler to that toxic person saying that's okay we don't rub men the wrong way you know we don't make them angry we listen to them you know all of that and now she is lacking all confidence and knowing that because she is a lady she is not deep down she may be a very urban woman and say no i am an equal i i'm earning i'm working same thing but deep down the seeding is the same that men are higher ups and they are allowed nonsense and they have grown up seeing mothers put loose boundaries no sense of boundaries and the father can behave like what he behaves like hmm. and now we are expecting this poor thing to put boundaries in place right you know bachcha don't do this talk in a sensible way but she has not seen anybody talk in a sensible way in our house right which is the reality of every house and now everybody is pouncing on this one now she makes it her agenda that i will prove to the world okay so she gives up her job she does whatever she can in her capacity and everybody says her job parenting her job first time mother parenting her job now she is all alone fighting this with her family members so if you remember when we did the on offline i said you buy your ticket your husband's ticket is on me right 
we sponsored the man because we wanted him to come there yeah. and learn that it is not this poor woman's fault yeah look at it as a society what are we doing we are axing the very branch on which we are sitting how stupid can that be right <coughs> excuse me and families need to realize this and so we need to empower the lady and tell her she need not be on an agenda of turning this kid around cuz alone it may be possible hmm. but it's going to be difficult as hell and an entire life is going to get messed up trying to do that yeah hmm. and it will be much faster if others can also get in first thing i want to tell parents is fathers and other people in the family it has got nothing to do with superiority or inferiority of genes Hmm. why somebody has autism who will have autism why does it happen which medicine will trigger it which what will trigger it <coughs> what will happen research for past 40 years have proved we know nothing yeah It is research after billions of dollars having gone into it the answer still is we know nothing so if i have a third kid okay well i do have three children one is a dog <laughs> but if i have a third human kid yeah i don't know if that kid will have autism or not yeah if i have triplets two of them can have autism and one of them not two of them can be regular and one with autism all three can have autism the possibilities are endless all three of them may not none of them have autism the possibilities are endless and we have no permutation combination saying what triggered people come with so much of guilt i fought with my husband oh it's uh, somebody is putting so much stress on you and you're pregnant and you're also working and you're also taking care of the house and then you are now guilty that because i fought back so this kid had autism i want ladies to know that's not how it works and yeah. nobody knows how it works <laughs> so forget about it the one thing to accept is yes this kid has autism and acceptance i think will become so much easier once the families begin to see more success stories Hmm. So if you talk about my son today, who's now gotten himself a job in Delhi, and while as parents we are scared how things are going to show up, but he's had enough training, and by God's grace, he's going to do well. Right. If we have more and more and more such like success stories, then that factor of you know this is mentally uh, you know all gone and this and that and uh, bad genes will be. taken away right. once that is taken away it is easy for a parent to accept that yeah so my kid was born with autism hmm. it's like little children so many children in the class wear specs today hmm. yeah that's pretty normal no father is saying my jeans and this and <laughs> that and why specs you know right yeah i mean yeah your eyes have an issue you wear specs that's the end of it you have autism you require autism specific parenting techniques and teaching techniques and autism specific in information so that you can help the child grow as holistically as possible avoiding the gaps right that's all that there is to it right. i think awareness is needed hmm now think of a small nuclear family there is a husband there is a wife there are two kids one kid is autistic and one kid is a neuro normal typical typical normal kid right what is the dynamics of the family like in reality what have you seen oh there's a variety of different dynamics those who are there are people who have amazing amount of acceptance wow okay amazing amount and i'm surprised and i bless those families so there are people where husband will be so forthright and he'll come forward and say so what do we need to do we've been told that maybe this this child right, right. so what do we need to do how do we pitch in tell how me what how can i help right yes those children by all means quite coincidentally quite coincidentally are high functioning <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so if you want to analyze the data 
all of those children are high functioning hmm. why how i don't know yeah hmm. i mean the answers are clear they are high functioning because, because parents, work is happening from day zero yeah the parents are actually supporting everybody is just into the process right then there are families where like i said all the burden is then left to the lady and hmm. when the child is not behaving regular okay hmm. and the expectations of the people around are not being met hmm. then the lady is being shamed what kind of upbringing are you doing whereas because of sheer lack of knowledge of behavior correction techniques it is the man who's ruining it so there are women who are coming to us who are learning and the kid is throwing a tantrum and the mother is sitting there and saying uh, it's a no you don't get this cake unless you finish the homework and he says i am too tired from office can this cacophony the sound be stopped can you just shut him up give him what he wants see what damage he has done he's ruined it the entire day's effort and this was the time the kid was about to get cracked and say this is too hard for me it doesn't work i'm not going to cry if i want my cake i will listen to her and finish the work but now not anymore now the kid knows so now when he's alone with the mother and this is what happens mothers say and fathers complain he never tantrums with her i come into picture now he makes life hell so you taught him you taught him to do that now why are you crying hmm so because of lack of an open mind to learn and lack of techniques the right techniques people open themselves themselves up to cheats those who come and say yes swarna bhasma 5 lakh rupees ki you know and all of that that yeah yeah there's lot in the market that we will you know crush some gold and some um, uh, you know some seeds and some you pay 5 lakhs and you give this medicine to the kid and he'll be okay so many people have been duped by such kind of people i think they are desperate need of making it work they are just getting into all the scams without right? realizing that just like you know that story in ramayana I, i'm not i'm not if i'm not wrong of 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 kasturi mrig <laughs> having that fragrance right in its navel and continues to find where is the fragrance coming from and exhausts itself to death yeah but not finding the fragrance the fragrance is in you you, you yeah. need to learn and start working on it mm-hmm. and then you can sit down and say oh well thank god god gave me a high functioning kid right that's that right and what about the families where both the parents are not accepting that's a very unfortunate situation for the kid then i console myself by saying like i believe in the theory of life and death and karma then i console myself by saying that uh, that is so far that you rajni can go for this kid this kid is some soul that has to repay its karmic debt from a previous birth to these people it's so and unfortunate that right? is what it has come here to do it's going to suffer to the last of its breath yeah and you have to pull out cause they have closed the door on you and there are lots of them lots of them that's sad so like if you have to if you have to give ratios with these three households what would it be like see it depends upon if it is a rural background uh, the third one is the highest it's all dependent upon awareness hmm so if uh, the the semi urban areas where you have tier 2 cities and all yeah, right yeah so there even in the metros to an extent you have the second categories i think it's the most prevalent right first is not so high uh, third one very high in ur- uh, rural areas very very hmm. rural areas uh, the second one in uh, the average middle class of india and uh, the first one blessed in metros awareness is high and in most of the cases they have come across another kid on the spectrum either in the office with a colleague mm-hmm. or something or they have some sort of 
awareness. Right, right. Like I remember of these two sisters, the elder sister had a kid on the autism spectrum and she was typically in the second mm. lot and struggling and suffering because of, you know, the situations and the circumstances and I was supporting her. And this child was four years old. And of course, now he's pretty much grown up. It's a pretty old thing I'm telling and her sister, whose kid was 15 months old, sister and brother-in-law, who would every time observe this kid when the elder sister would come home. Mm. And they're looking at their child. At 15 months, she connected with me. I said, this is not the right age for diagnosis of autism. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you anything. We have to wait at least until, we can say there's a risk, but we have to wait until at least he's two. Hmm. I mean, I I cannot do this. It's not, it's not legal. And she said, I understand that, but I know he has autism no, because she audience. has seen she, it. She has experience. She has seen it. She's seen first... it with her nephew. Yeah. And she said, please tell me autism specific teaching techniques so that I can, I can save start. my kid from getting into those areas by knowing it before and that is the best way to work around it today that younger uh, sister's son is five years he goes mm. to a mainstream school sits with other children she's spoken to the teachers that he has this condition called autism she has regular ptms he's doing very well and the last i know is they said he doesn't need a shadow now because he's learned at five okay to sit in a class with everybody listen follow through 